everybody. My name is John Kendall, and I lead the container monitoring product at Datadog. And for those who don't know what Datadog is, Datadog is an observability service for your cloud scale applications. And every year we deliver the container report, which I'm excited to share with you today, uh, where we examine over 1.5 billion containers from tens of thousands of customers. And we share some trends that we're seeing in the container ecosystem that we all participate in. So today I'm gonna to do a bit of a different experience. It'll be a little interactive, a bit of a game, where I'm gonna give you a sample of some of the themes that we saw in this year's report. And by a show of hands, I'll be asking you where you think we landed on some of these trends. So to get started, manage Kubernetes services. This is where you're offloading the operations of your control plan to cloud providers like GKE from Google Cloud, Google Kubernetes Engine, or AKS from Azure. And I'm curious from the crowd, um, I'm gonna ask you a question around this. So if you had to guess, would you say over half of organizations are using managed Kubernetes, Kubernetes service or less than half? So by a show of hands, over half of organizations are using managed Kubernetes services. Okay. And how many of you think about less than half are using managed Kubernetes services? Wow, we're kind of split down the middle. As a matter of fact, uh, nearly 90% of managed of organizations are using managed Kubernetes services. So thinking EKS, GKE, AKS, and they are letting cloud providers do the control plane operations for them. Moving on, looking at pod auto scaling. So we examine both horizontal pod auto scaling and vertical pod auto scaling, horizontal pod auto scaling, meaning you're changing the number of pods, identical pods that you're using in, uh, in response to fluctuations in demand. Hor vertical pod auto scaling, talking about how you can change the uh, characteristics of your pods in terms of CPU and memory. And considering horizontal pod auto scaling, uh, another question, would you say that over 10% of organizations are using horizontal pod auto scaling or less than 10? So by a show of hand, over 10 are using, 10% uh, of organizations are using horizontal pod auto scaling. Okay, not many. And how many of you think less than 10 are using horizontal pod auto scaling? Yeah, about 40% of organizations are using horizontal pod auto scaling and are really becoming more sophisticated and they're being comfortable um, having their metric services uh, emit what they need to watch for to change the number of pods in response to demands and traffic. Datadog is an observability service, so people use monitors. And we looked at not only organizations using containers, but organizations not using containers and what are your thoughts on, would you say that organizations using containers in terms of the number of monitors for organization, organizations using containers versus not using containers, which type of organization um, typically had more monitors? So by a show of hands, non-containerized organizations, more monitors, and containerized organizations using more monitors. We appear to be split down the middle uh, it turns out that organizations using containers had more monitors as of 2021 by a meaningful amount. Docker. Docker shim is being deprecated, as many of you may know, in, in Kubernetes 1.24, it will be removed. And for context, Docker shim is an underlying component within Kubernetes that enables uh, users to be able to use the Docker container runtime uh, with Kubernetes. And, uh, it's being removed and users are being are migrating to um, other container runtime such as container d and uh, so this is something that i'm sure a lot of you are curious about is where this is going so uh, by a show of hands around would you say over 10 percent at this point have migrated away from docker container runtime or less than 10 percent so over 10 percent okay and less than 10 percent yeah, it seemed like we're kind of split down the middle. Uh, yeah, we have some ways to go in this migration. We found that at the moment, about uh, since January, about 7% have migrated to container D in this context. Uh, and to wrap things up uh, with the last theme that we're looking at, considering- I'm sorry, we're out of time. We'd... Oh, no, wait, wait, you can do this one. 
cool. <laughs> so the percentage growth of uh, users uh, using OpenShift, um, how much, by show of hands, over 10% have migrated to, or <laughs> the percentage growth of users using OpenShift, and less than 10% growth. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, the percentage growth of organizations using OpenShift. And it turns out that roughly 28% growth in the past year has happened. Uh, users, organizations are finding tremendous value out of using the uh, advanced security features and other features for managing their clusters. But John, let me ask you this. This uh, information is probably like really old, right? It's like, is this like two years ago report or like exactly which report is this and when will it be released? Uh, so this report was published today, and this is talking about as of 2021. Uh, so to wrap things up, I invite you to come join us at our major booth at the, uh, at the expo area. Um, we can talk about the report, and you're welcome to receive a demo of Datadog. Uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>